Hey there, welcome to my YouTube channel. This video will be about Look Reflections episode number three with Woman International Master Jessie February. These Look Reflections podcast happen on my Twitch channel live so you can ask your questions right there from me or my guests as well but i will also upload them to my youtube channel and create a blog about it on chess.com i already had two episodes with woman with the master alessia santaramo and grandmaster Juanes Kabusian. feel free to check those out too i posted all the links under the video if you like this video don't forget to subscribe like the video and i would be also happy to hear your about your experience in the comment section enjoy the video i have to admit i'm a little bit nervous because i know that um you've sent me some questions for the interview and stuff but i always get a little bit nervous when it comes to i suppose not even interviews just like collaborations and stuff because um yeah anxiety is a real thing but uh yeah, it's always really fun once we get into it and I always have a, a bunch of fun uh, when we collaborate so I know this is going to be just as fun so yeah yes yes well of course uh thank you very much for accepting uh, uh my invitation uh to this interview and uh, don't worry about it I will just ask uh you know the your your darkest secrets about chess and chess life so there is nothing to worry about of course, when we're talking about the most personal things in the world, what is there to worry about anyway? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, well, are you ready for the first question? Oh, we're jumping right in. Um, okay. Unless you have something to say, last words. Any last words? Yes. Oh, God, am I about to die or <laughs> be interviewed? Okay. Yeah. Um, no, I think I'm, I'm good. I've also turned off my music so that if I do end up also putting together the questions and answers, I think it'll be fun content. Um, so yeah, we promote both of our channels and things, but, um, so who have you interviewed? I feel like I'm asking questions now. Who have you interviewed already? <laughs> well, so far, the first episode was with, uh, Alessia Santaramo. Uh, and, then uh, I had an interview with, uh, Jovenes Capucian and mm -hmm. you are my, you are my third victim. Oh, wow. Yes. I like how you say victim, but uh, yeah, only third. That's amazing. I feel honored. That's incredible. Thank you for reaching out. <laughs> well, thank you for, for agreeing to it. And um, yes, I have some fun or not so fun questions for you. <laughs> um, I'm ready or not so ready. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, you have seen the questions. Uh, mostly it will be about, um, about chess since uh you know we happen to stream chess most of the time <laughs> it can be about hogwarts legacy as well but i <laughs> oh, Hogwarts, right, right, right. Hogwarts legacy, gotcha. but um <clears throat> i thought chess would be a better idea and mm -hmm. i have some questions regarding chess psychology chess life your chess experience and um yes some other fun chess questions Cool. Yes. Yeah. Glamding. Let me intrigue. Glamding yeah? says uh, forty percent of my uh, audience like chess. Yes, because Twitch told me actually that forty-five percent of my audience uh, likes chess, and I should try it out. And I said, okay, okay. thank you. Yeah, that's a good, um, good feedback, right? <laughs> Usually, I wonder. You know, it just makes us wonder about the other sixty percent. But uh, we're not the scientists here. Yes, right, right. All right, so let's get started. My first question would be, how did you start playing chess? You know, just as, just an introduction question. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, when I was five, I was drafted for the army. And uh, one of the things that we enjoyed in our you know pastime was was playing games and one of them was i'm joking i was not drafted for the army um when i was seven my mom taught me how to play chess <laughs> <laughs> and uh it was just a ploy to try and get me out of trouble i'm sure i was a very busy kid as most kids are and uh yeah so i i didn't really take interest until i turned eight 
I started playing at school. I realized I had a little bit of a a competitive streak to me and start playing tournaments as well. And of course, it, it being like a male dominated sport, it's never really easy for for females to be motivated to continue playing. So I luckily was very much a tomboy and I don't think I admitted this enough. I liked everything um, <clears throat> that, a, that a little boy would usually like, I guess, like cars, cargo pants, uh, John Cena wearing dollar sign chains. I don't know. That that was me. <laughs> so I really fit in with the, the current crowd there. And uh, yeah, I, I guess that's how that's how it all started. And I just continued playing. I was always known as the the chess player in my grade at school. And I guess once it stuck, I never really stopped. And there are a lot of things that I picked up and put down, like playing the piano, um, hockey, netball, water polo, all the other things, but chess is the one that stuck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And are you happy with this decision? Uh, you know, I have my regrets. Sometimes it's a lot of heartache. Actually, I lie. And most of the time it's just heartache and uh, tilting and uh, being sad about losing. <laughs> but then you win that odd game and you feel really great about yourself. Plus I have a, a bunch of goals and I guess chess has just been a part of my life now for what, 17, 18 years. And I can't imagine not playing or not being a part of the chess community. So, yeah. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. I, I can actually re relate to uh, the tomboy part a lot. I, oh, okay. Yeah, when I was uh, younger, I, I liked to fight with boys, uh, <laughs> box with boys. <laughs> Oh, lovely. Same. I can, I can attest to that. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, nice. Yes. Well, actually, um, there was, um, there was a time on my stream when someone asked if I would be up for some chess boxing when this topic came up and I said, sure. And I think giant pixels, uh, asked if I would be up for chess boxing with you. Oh, we should do it. But like, <laughs> I feel like you're so nice and I try to be so nice. So it's going to be really tough to like, you know, like punch you and stuff. <laughs> like, I don't want to do that. Can we like wear masks? Oh, you know what we should do? What? I have a brilliant idea. Yes. We should do Nintendo boxing. Nintendo boxing. It would be so amazing. Yeah. It's like, you know, Nintendo Wii, Nintendo Switch. You can like do the boxing and stuff. We should do that. Okay. Where it's like, it's still boxing. Yeah, and it this. can be done online, <laughs> but no physical contact. That would be brilliant. I think I just came up with the best idea in the entire world. That sounds yeah. good, actually. Just let yeah. me know the time and the date, <laughs> and I, oh, wow, I, I and will be, I will be there. <laughs> I feel like Fuji's going to box me, guys. <laughs> I told you you will be my third victim. You thought I was joking. <laughs> No, it explains all Alessia's scars and <laughs> blue bruises, <laughs> blue eyes. And uh, you mentioned that you have a lot of goals. Um, does it include, uh, do, do those include uh, chess goals or do you focus mostly on content creation? Yeah, I've always wanted to become an Instagram model. Um, I'm joking, of course. So my chess goals include, you know, reaching 2100 um fide rating and i know that's a very like solid goal and maybe it's not a very <clears throat> ambitious goal in terms of you know the top female players being like 24 25 2600 um but it's a very specific goal for me because once i reach 2100 i get my woman grandmaster title in oh, 2021 wow. yeah in 2021 I, I won the continental the african championship and uh, they changed the rules. Uh, you know, it used to be direct title. So no matter your rating, you got the title. And now I have to reach this prerequisite, uh, which is 2100, in order to make it official and have it on paper and get the little the bill badge that comes along with the title. And I really like those. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, yeah, wow. so that, that's my goal in, in chess, or at least playing chess. I'm hoping to now that I live in a, a bigger city, I can play more tournaments and also travel more. 
Um, but other than that, I think I also have some like streaming goals, probably just try to grow the community. And of course, um, it's a little bit of a, you know, a dark cave with cobwebs and stuff. But my YouTube is also one of the things I want to grow. And I have pretty good ideas that need to be implemented. But you know, there's a big difference between having ideas and, and doing them. So yeah, we, we need to cross that, that, you know, bridge yes. at some point. Yes. Right. Because mm. yeah, I, I can also relate to that. Uh, I'm full of ideas what should be done and, uh, yeah, what stories I should make. I actually have a full list, uh, in a document oh, of, uh, these okay. little chess stories, but I, I need to do them. <laughs> Yeah, no, I love your videos so far. <laughs> They've been so hilarious. And you're someone who seems like very timid and, you know, quiet and to yourself, like on Twitch and stuff. And then I see your videos and I'm like cracking up. I'm like, who is this girl? <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah, it's it's brilliant. And I love how you do it with a straight face as well. It's great. It's great acting. You should become an actress. Thank you. You know what we should have? Yes. A reality show for chess players. Would you join? That would be awesome. Our, yeah, we could have like a whole, you know, for a month rent like a house for chess content creators and then just like have us be filmed. And there we go. That's season one. That's season one. And, yeah, and should, that's it. should the content creators, um, well, mm, should the viewers vote out certain content creators or should we just stay Ooh. and... And I was, I was thinking, yeah, just staying, hanging out and stuff, just like the Kardashians. No one really gets voted out. But uh, yeah, maybe we could do some sort of challenges too, where, you know, you could just be like, I don't like this person. Beep, delete. <laughs> and then they have to leave. So that would be amazing. Yeah, we could do that. <laughs> yes, yeah, massive actually, drama. Yeah, it would be fun yeah. if chess.com ever decided to do that. <clears throat> maybe I would be up for it too. <laughs> <laughs> there we go <laughs> so many great ideas coming from this already and we're only five minutes in wow <laughs> yes right well wow. i think woman gra uh woman grandmaster just to uh get back to your goals i think that sounds very go cool and uh that's a title i dreamed of as well but yeah maybe oh, one day great. one day I'm oh, don't say dreamed of. It's a dream. We are going to achieve it. All it's right. going to happen. Of course. Actually, yes. I'm working on it too. So just, yeah, I, I unfortunately um, didn't win any continental uh, <laughs> tournaments <laughs> like oh you. So I'm not as cool it's as you. It's a little bit, I, I'm assuming it's a little bit more tough to do it the, the right way, the proper way, you know, getting <laughs> the norms and the rating and the, performance rating and all those other things and that's really really tough i know that but you have you have an advantage you live in europe and that helps a lot i think uh yes that's yes? that's also no? true yes. yes 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 okay. indeed okay so third question uh we get into business now so oh. what what is the funniest and weirdest uh, chess related thing that's ever happened to you it can be funniest plus weirdest so two different things or you can also mix it if you want to <laughs> like like during a chess game um during a chess game or a tournament chess camps um if you attended uh, any chess camps and yeah what was it? Okay. Spill the beans. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't even recall, like, thinking about this question. Okay. So the weirdest thing that's ever happened, um, or most interesting thing that's ever happened. Um, yeah, I was, how old was I? I was 12 or 13, and I was playing in the national championship. And I was the only girl in, in the A squad and we were playing against this team. It's usually like 10 v 10. And I believe my game was the deciding game. And if I'd won, our team would win. And so it was very intense. Like there were people standing around and all of that. And, uh, you know, when you're done with your game, you sort of have to sign your score sheet and give it to the other player. 
to sign as well. And I, I won the game and I sort of assumed that my opponent would be really angry and frustrated, you know, that they lost. But they were just like smiling the whole time. And I was like, what's going on? And so, you know, a little 13 year old tomboy me with my hair, like slicked back and, you know, just wearing baggy clothes and all the rest. <clears throat> so I, I give my notation sheet over and he like signs it, but he's taking a really long time to sign it. And, uh, oh, I, I don't even think I've told this story ever. <laughs> and he gives the notation sheet back. And it, it like says, well played, um, here's my cell phone number or something like that. I'm like, I don't even have a cell phone. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was really funny. I, I think I ended up laughing quite a bit after that. <laughs> and uh, that, that was great. That was great. Um, I can't remember anything else, I guess. Um, I've been to one or two chess camps also when I was quite young, like nine or 10. We would have the you know national team just go out and um, spend time together at someone's like farmhouse or so. And then we had these like team building activities where we had to reenact certain scenarios. And I just remember making an absolute fool out of myself by doing <laughs> like some miming act. And I just remember there, not even people laughing, just like awkward silence of like me <laughs> doing miming and everyone watching. And I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> I wasn't a very smart kid, I must tell you. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, that that was also something I suppose I was humiliating on my part. Um, uh, in terms of probably distracting opponents, there are a bunch of things that my opponents have done um, to throw me off my game, especially when it's been my move. And uh, I get distracted really easily, so it affects me a lot. Yeah, I don't know if that also is roped in or in, into another question, perhaps. But yeah, uh, that's <laughs> all I can think of right now. I'm pretty sure there are plenty other stories, but nothing that comes to me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm just wondering if the guy did sign uh, your co score sheet or he just wrote, this is my number and... Oh, he Call signed me. it. And then he was like, um, yeah, this is my cell phone number um, with like a smiley face or something. And um, yeah, little old 13 year old me obviously didn't understand anything. I was like, why are you giving me your number sort of vibes? Yeah. <laughs> um, at this point, I'm afraid to ask what the person was. <laughs> How old they were? Yes. Well, it was a national championship. So pretty much the same age as me, either 12 or 13. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, it wasn't anything creepy at least. Okay. No. Okay. I, I think it was just two kids. Yeah. Yes. All right. Did you know the guy or? No, complete stranger. Complete stranger. But I think they were like really impressed that it's like, oh, this girl on the team and, you know, she won the match. And it's very new back then. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like this anomaly, you know, out of like 2,000 kids, maybe you have like 50 girls or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it does go like that, indeed. Mm -hmm. And uh, have you ever <clears throat> laughed during a chess match? I have laughed. Oh my gosh! I, <laughs> yes, oh, man. So many stories of when I was younger. Um, but it's crazy. My memory usually is terrible, but when it comes to chess games and chess experiences, I usually remember like what my opponent wore what happened during the game, something I ate before the game. Like, I'll remember all of that stuff, which is very scary. Um, so perhaps if I were to study for an exam, I should do so while playing a chess game. That could work. You know, I never tried that. Okay, anyway. So um, we were busy playing. I was playing on board one of this open tournament, and I was also quite young. I'm pretty sure I was about 14. And I we all of a sudden we were playing in this like school hall but we ended up hearing these sounds i think it was someone trying to play the piano um and they were playing it with such confidence but it sounded awful and we couldn't track down this person because obviously it was in a room but we couldn't hear um exactly where it was coming from i think the arbiter was running after this you know, the sound to try and stop them from playing the piano because it's going through the entire hall and we're all laughing at the fact that this piano is making the horrible sounds it's making. And I don't think that's what made me laugh, but the fact that my opponent started laughing and everyone else around started laughing, <laughs> I just like put my, I put my face in my hands and I was just like giggling so much. 
Um, and I still remember what kind of it was a it was a French defense. I was playing white, and I usually hated playing against the French defense because I never knew what to do. It always seemed like I had a great opening because I had the space, but then it turns around and you know I mean back then I didn't know any theory, so it was like magic, and then I would lose. So it was a it was a French, and I lost that game. But that was a very funny moment in time. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, surely there there were other times as well where maybe you know you're sitting in a row of people playing chess, and someone down there is like making a really funny sound, like they're going, <laughs> you know, they, they're sitting up and making sounds, and you you find yourself laughing just because you know either laughing to yourself or, um, yeah. I don't know. There, there were times where my opponent knew they had blundered and started laughing and I couldn't resist but like smile or giggle as well. And it would be like a queen blunder or something crazy. So yeah, um, it's not all been serious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, right. Um, it's funny because I noticed that on um, maybe less serious tournaments um, that the playing hall is not necessarily in a fancy place. Let's say I, I also have a story where I played uh, on a uh, regional um, team chess championship. I was uh, board one, I think, anyways. Uh, and and it was an important match, you know, but it was in a in a in a room of um, of a restaurant. And we were right next to the kitchen. There was only one door that uh, divided the two place, uh, the two places, and <laughs> and the and the cooks were were gossiping about someone else who we didn't know who it was, but oh they were, they were talking and and talking behind someone else's back, and you know you could you could hear everything. And you couldn't just knock that, hey, shut up, because, well, we were, <laughs> we, we rented the place, but uh, yeah, it was, it was quite funny. Okay, they didn't talk through the whole game, but uh, yeah, there were moments uh, when they were gossiping or, or screaming at each other. So yeah, that was, that was also funny. <laughs> Oh no, and you could hear what they were saying as well. Did you eventually figure out who they were talking about or not? Mm, I think one of their colleagues, maybe. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I didn't know them, just they were working there. And uh, yeah, it was quite distracting. Uh, that yeah, oh, you, no. you are there trying to focus <laughs> and then you hear, ah, you heard what Johnny did! <gasps> oh! <laughs> and, and they oh, started, God. yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's... Well, I hope the game went well. I lost. <laughs> oh no, I hate that. Okay. <laughs> Oof. But yeah, it, it was a fun story. Yes. Mm. Uh... <laughs> Indeed. Okay. Um, so talking about uh, the, uh, laughs and, and funny stories, now let's talk about something uh, a little bit more serious. What do you think is an underrated chess skill? Underrated but, chess skill? Mm -hmm. Like psychologically or even on the board. What do you think? Mm. I definitely think one of the underrated skills would be... Um, playing quite quickly, but not just quickly, but accurately. You know, I think it's obviously great when, when you know your theory, but you'd even have those cases where you, you know what to do or you know what to play and you still like sort of doubting yourself or thinking about it. And then you have those players who it, it's quite frustrating being on the receiving end of it where, you know, they're playing quite quickly and they know what, they know what they're doing. They're barely, you know, paying attention to the board and they're sort of saying, you know what, I don't, I don't really care about this game and it's it feels disrespectful and that's like one of the reasons why I play chess because of the respect that you receive you know the better you play and that usually gets under my skin and for tournaments like that where I know I'm going to encounter someone who's going to disrespect me like that 
I'm probably going to wear a cap or just put my hands like this so I can't really see them. Um, so it's it's things like that 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 get under my skin because it's it's both psychological, but they're also gaining time on the clock, and then I end up doubting myself even more. Um, I realized. Mm -hmm. um, but something that I'd say is more of a respectable thing that goes unnoticed sometimes is. Uh, oof. I don't know how to put it into words, I guess. Uh, you're, <clears throat> you're low on time, but your opponent doesn't, you know, react to it as, as you would. Like, I would be frantically sort of, like, switching my body language, trying to, like, look over to the clock. But I realized that there's actually a trick when, when your opponent is low on time, you try to be as still as possible, because then that um you know gives the impression that time is sort of standing still and the moment you move or the moment you um like shift your body language they're going to like wake up and realize okay listen my time is ticking down and this has happened quite a lot where um i'll be completely still and try not to move um even like my 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 eyes i try not to blink and they lose on time or they forget that the time is running and they're like got two seconds on the clock and they have to make a move but of course, it takes about like two seconds to make that move. You go like this and you have to press the clock and they time out. So that's worked out a couple of times. <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> say that's very respectable, but it's something that, you know, can can have, you know, work on their, their subconscious a little bit. Yes. Um, but yeah, I don't know. What do you think? Ooh, I wasn't prepared to answer my own question. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I got a raid. Uh, thank you very much for the, for the raid. Uh, uh, thank you so much. I hope you had an amazing stream. Uh, now we have a podcast episode with uh, Jessie February. Please do check her out. And uh, yeah, we are talking about chess experience and uh, chess psychology. Uh, so, well, welcome. You're welcome to stay here with us. Uh, yes, an underrated chess skill. <laughs> oh wow i don't even know if you'd call that a skill but yeah i think you would have better answers than <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. i guess to stay mentally stable during a game maybe uh like uh not to be like <gasps> mm -hmm. <laughs> this kind of person you know who who just um yeah, uh, goes with the emotion, emotions, and and yeah, um, nervous, shaking. Maybe I have seen people shake at the board. So yes. I I always respect and look up to people who are like like um, a stone, a statue. Like whatever happens, they mm. blunder the queen. Their faces like oh, this, wow. or or mm -hmm. whatever happens on the board, they are like this. So yeah, I I try to act like it. Uh, I I also try to stay like this, but in myself, I'm like, like a poker face. Yeah, in <laughs> yeah. in my head, it's not what's going on. I'm like, no, what happened here? <laughs> so yes, yes. Yeah, you're saying you know you you got to try and keep a psychological um hold or, or like sort of keep yourself together during a chess game and I think uh maybe the more difficult task is just you know being psychologically okay being a chess player <laughs> in general <laughs> yes. it really gets to us yeah but yeah <laughs> yes yes indeed um yeah mm, talking about chess psychology what do you think um mm, or well not what do you think my question is uh about your experience, does anyone try anything psychological against you? You mentioned that uh, when they are playing fast and they act like they don't care about it. Um, is there anything else that you notice during a game? I uh, definitely think that just strange sounds or maybe they're sniffing or like, you know, doing stuff that may appear um, intentional sometimes it is just by accident maybe it's really cold and they they have a runny nose or something like that but um one of the most recent things that have happened and i found that this is quite um 
common for this player to do, and I'm not going to mention any names, but in a local tournament, <clears throat> what they do is, and they're old enough to know that what they're doing is very disrespectful or wrong. They're probably like really close to, to 20 or like 17, 18 or something. And they're standing over the board. They're making a move while standing. They're super tall. So I'm sure they have to like bend down quite a lot. And, um, you know, making sounds at the board, but not only when it's, you know, when it's my move, not when it's their move. And it really throws me off a lot. And I try to either stand away from the board when it's not my move, trying to like just ignore all of that, but still focusing on the game. It's very tough when they're trying every single trick in the book to try and get you to stop thinking about chess or looking at the board. And at some point I got fed up and I looked at him. It was my move, so I wasn't wasting his time. It was my move and I looked at him and I said, can you please go blow your nose? And it like rattled everyone who was just there. And I'm pretty sure some people laughed, but I was like, <laughs> I've had enough. I can't deal with this. And I swear he just got up. He disappeared for like 15 minutes. <laughs> and when he came back, he like didn't make a sound again. But I was like, I had enough of this. I can't deal with it. Um, but yeah, I need to either get myself or like invest in a bunch of ear plugs to stop hearing sounds. It also interrupts me when people walk past. And a lot of the open tournaments just allow people to walk in and out. And yeah, I, I think I just get distracted easily. So that list can go on and on and on. Um, but yeah, that, that's about it, I guess. <laughs> wow, I, I respect you uh, even more now because uh, you could stand up for yourself and uh, actually tell the guy to do something with their nose. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because I think he's gonna remember that <laughs> for sure. But I mean, I guess it's it's good that you give this sort of feedback. If we can call it a feedback, then shut up finally and and don't be um, loud. You know, I I don't know. I I'm personally always so self conscious during a game. Like if if I need to cough, I'm like keep it in, keep it in. And oh just, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it so. used to be that way and now I just cough. I don't care. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, if I need to blow my nose. Okay, I don't like blowing my nose in front of people. So I'll make, I usually just like step away and blow my nose or something. Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to a cough, I'll just I'll just let it out. Um, I, I'm trying to think of, of what else sort of if you need to sneeze. Do you sneeze at the board? Do you just like go for it? It depends. <laughs> it depends if it's my move. And I have to sit there, then yes. Yes, but... You're like, this is my move, can't sneeze, okay. <laughs> no, actually, it's funny because... <laughs> Talking about totally hygienic things. <laughs> but recently I was sick uh, on, my, on my previous uh, tournament. And uh, well, what we are talking about was the reality <laughs> back then. And uh, I was sick. So yeah, I had to sneeze and I don't know, it's, it's so bad because I didn't want to distract my opponent. I didn't want to be disgusting either. So I tried to hold it in, but it, uh, yeah, came out and, uh, it was like, uh, you know, when you don't sneeze out loud, <laughs> but like you make a strange noise instead. And, uh, that's even more embarrassing than sneezing actually, because you make oh, a, yes. you make a sound kind of, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I can't imitate it. And, uh, yeah, it was, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't great. <laughs> it wasn't. Yeah. yeah. yeah so. And something that happens like during, okay. When I was at school during exams and during chess, you know, it's a completely quiet hall, just a lot of people and then your stomach starts making noises <laughs> and it's either because you're hungry or you're busy digesting your food <laughs> but all of that happens and you're like oh my god it's echoing everyone can hear what do I do um and then I try to like clear my throat to mask the sound of my stomach if I know something's coming um but yeah nothing's worse than than, than like a nine-year-old opponent or someone there who's really young and just lets one rip and you just smell the entire fart throughout the entire hall oh great yeah that that's happened before <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Oof. <laughs> <laughs> Online chess is much easier. I don't know. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, that's not the next question, but, um, uh, <laughs> my, my, one of my next questions would be, what is something that, um, uh, people who only play online wouldn't understand about OTP. And I guess this is one of the <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's probably. Um, but like dealing with the distractions and I think it's a lot, uh, there's a lot more pressure. What, I mean, there's nothing that you could do online to prepare you for an over the board tournament. You have to sort of just, um, if you want to play OTB, you gotta, you gotta do it. And there's nothing you could read. There's nothing you could do to prepare. You just have to do it. And, and that's how you get your experience. Cause I know, um, your nerves will be shot when sitting across a real person. I think it's easier to um, mask your feelings or feel a lot more comfortable behind a, a computer screen playing a, a game of chess because you don't know what your opponent's doing. You don't know um, if they're showing any sort of um, facial expressions and stuff like that. And it's something I think as a chess player, you sort of subconsciously subconsciously learn like how to read body language. And um, oftentimes I'm just seeing it in my peripheral if my opponent does something I know exactly how they would feel depending on how many times I've played them. If I'm familiar with their, you know, um, their usual, like the way they act and stuff like that, I find that <laughs> what farting online is less of an issue for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think you can smell through your computer. At least that's always a good thing. They haven't invented that yet. Um, I think cooking shows would be taken by storm. But anyway, if we were <laughs> to continue along <laughs> this train of thought. Um, yeah, I think I'm relatively good at reading body language. So I would say that is the biggest difference um, in, you know, being around real people as opposed to just sitting alone in a room online. Um, but also the things that come with playing a tournament. I mean, you have those breaks in between games. Um, I really enjoy the camaraderie, like communicating with people that I know, seeing people, seeing friends again, um, chatting to others and I think also, especially when you you play a lot of tournaments, you get to know even even more people, and I don't know, it's it's sort of like a a social fest, and I don't I don't get out much, so it's it's nice to socialize sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Um, I I have a question that wasn't on the list, so I just kind of improvised it now. Um, yeah. Are you confident? Uh, can, can you confidently <clears throat> tell um, when someone is just making up their their um, behavior like they make a suspicious move that looks like a blunder and they are like acting like they blundered oh. so i mean obviously wow. you can tell if someone is clearly like oh no i blundered my queen which of course yeah. you cannot do during gun um Important. Definitely my match against Eric Rosen. Um, no, I'm just joking. Uh, yeah, I I guess when I was younger that used to happen. I realize now that people try to, if they think they've blundered or if they're making a really smart move, they're making it confidently, right? Or you know, they would make a really fast move and I'm like, but you're leaving your night hanging up. Oh, probably it's not hanging, you know, sort of vibe. So sometimes it's, it's easy to know um, whether that piece is actually free or not. Mm -hmm. But most of the time you sort of have to call their bluff and say, listen, I have to double check this quickly if you have time and then and, and double check it, I guess. Uh, it happens a lot less now than it used to, just because I guess most of my opponents aren't that much younger than me. Um, mm -hmm. unless I'm traveling and playing in tournaments in the Middle East or something, and then you're, you're finding, you know, Indian players, half your age, <laughs> will double your strength sitting <laughs> across from you, then it's tough. Um, but yeah, not, not really as often anymore. Does it happen to you? Um, well, I, I try to not look at my opponents, um, 
um, behavior. I, I try to kind of sit like this so they also don't see me. And uh, I try not to look at them because, well, I have a psychologist degree, but um, I would prefer not to, you know, I, I would like to think normally I would understand when it's, when they are lying or when they are not lying during a game um, with their body language. But I don't want to guess that in a, um, in a stressful situation, you know, like a, a chess game, because, yeah. Um, so I just prefer to ignore them, but I do notice, yeah, that they feel uncomfortable. But I would also like to think that when I feel good in, in my position and they are like, then, then I, I understand that they are not feeling well either. Uh, but I try yeah. not to let it affect my, I don't know, confidence. Like when they are like... <laughs> Or, or really not no, not mm. acting well. And I'm like, why? I don't feel good either. What's going on? Uh, then, mm -hmm. then I try not to, I don't know, get affected. Like maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Like I normally when I notice these more, I already know what's happening on the board. So I try not to yeah, uh, get affected okay. by it. Yes. Nice. Because, yeah, on one hand, if you're covering your face, you can't see your opponent. But on the other hand, they can't see you. So perhaps it's like a a, a double thing there. Yeah. Yes. Words are difficult in the English language. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, a fun <clears throat> question, since we discussed a lot of serious questions already. Uh, mm -hmm. Is Koda there, by the way? Koda is here. Oh, um, yes. I don't know where he is, but he's here somewhere. Sa same thing with my cat, because I got a cat recently. and <gasps> How old are they? Uh, he's five months old. Oh my so... gosh, they're so tiny. Um, he is quite big now. Uh, I, think he's, okay. I think he's downstairs in the garden, so I won't get him now. But maybe if he comes back, I will show him. And uh, my, yeah. my question would be, I'm sure you saw this question. <laughs> Who do you think would be a better chess player? Your, your dog Koda or my cat Houdini? And why would it be my cat? I'm pretty sure Houdini could fit in Koda's mouth, but I'm not going to say that. Out, oh, wait, I just said it out loud. <laughs> um, but then on the other hand... I feel like even though you named your cat after a chess engine, if you were to put Coda in front of a chess board, he would actually eat your pieces, um, whereas Houdini would just knock them off the board. So I feel like that that's like a paper versus rock situation, like, you know, paper beats rock, so get wrecked. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I guess we'll have to put them uh, in front of each other and see who wins at a chess game. It would be great. Yes, that would be great yeah. content also. Maybe, maybe when, so. yeah, maybe when we get invited to this chess reality show, we can bring our pets uh -huh. with us. And, there we uh, go. I don't know how Code is going to be on a plane, but yeah, it'll be great. <laughs> it's going to happen. <laughs> yes. Right. Okay. Uh, back to serious questions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> have you ever flagged anyone OTB? I think you said something like this. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. Like you did. Actually, but... like two weeks ago or three weeks ago, I flagged someone. But, but, and but... I used that strat of like not moving at all. Yeah, continue. All right, but it was a classical game, right? Or... Yes, it was with increment. Yeah. E... It was a 1990 plus 30. And yeah, my opponent, okay, was much, much older than me. And I, I think I was in a, a very much a losing position, but I tried to get some sort of, um, you know, uh, what do they call it? Uh, where you, you build a little fort, I don't know, where you, you try to stop your opponent from making any progress, even though they're winning. Mm -hmm. And he was thinking too long and I just ended up sitting like this and... I was trying not to 
move my eyes at all, but I was like sort of keeping a close eye on the clock as well. And then he just forgot to move. And I was like, your time's up. And I still had, you know, mating material on the board and that was it. He lost the game. And I was, I mean, it felt like a really bad loss, but I, <laughs> inside I was smiling so much. I was like, <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but it happened. And uh, yeah, I was just happy to not lose that game. A fortress, that's the word. Man, English is hard. Yeah, I, was <laughs> built, I built a sort of fortress. He was two pawns up. I put my king between the pawns and had my rook going around. Um, was, so yeah, was... was he very upset, visibly? Actually, funny enough, he, he was just, he laughed a little bit. He's like, oh, well done, well done. And uh, I think he was just taking notes of the fact that, you know, he lost on time and, and I made it difficult for him to win a game with two pawns up so i don't know what he was saying well done too but i was like okay thanks <laughs> okay bye yeah yeah, yeah well um, when <sighs> when my opponents are on low time i i try not to look at their clock visibly mm. uh that's that's my psychological trick <laughs> maybe <laughs> because yeah no it helps yeah, because because yeah, if I if I just look at their uh, visibly and they turn my head to check the clock, they are like that too, and they start to panic mm. and realize, oh, sure, I need to move. So yes. so if if I if I look at their clock, it's more like just slowly moving my eye or or even like this, so they don't see that I look at the the time. Exactly, you like pretend to like sort of scratch your eyelash or eyebrow and you're like, oh, I'm looking. <laughs> and then you you go back to just, you know, focusing on the position and pretending to really not look at the clock. And I, I realize as well, sometimes when my opponent's time is low, I inadvertently try to move faster and then I'm making inaccurate moves, which makes it more, well, easier for my opponent to find better moves. And um, yeah, that's something I'm falling victim to a lot of the time. And when I used to coach a lot, that was something I told my students as well. I was like, if they're playing fast or they're low on time, doesn't mean you have to play fast. You have the time, think more, spend more time in the position. So yeah, I need to practice what I preach in that regard. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, actually I, I sometimes um, played uh, against uh, my uh, my students and uh, they have like five minutes or sometimes let's say 10 minutes and they are much lower rated and I gave myself 30 seconds to make it a bit more exciting and to be honest for me when I had 30 seconds against my student my my opponent it felt worse when they took their time because I had to be there and think I couldn't just, I don't know, uh, I don't know, just move a little bit because, because I didn't know when I have to react and I was, I, there was no yeah. increment of course. So, so it felt stressful and, and I hated it more when they actually reacted faster because of course, if mm -hmm. they reacted faster and I saw a, a bad move that they made, I was like, haha, there we go. And I could, um, yeah, yeah, win, win, even yeah, in, in that way because yeah, uh, but <laughs> but when they took their time, I was like, make a move already. I'm oh stressed. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, of course. Ugh. There's so many elements to the game. It's not just you know the moves on the board. It's it's the time. It's how you're feeling on the day. There's just too much, and I think that's that sort of. Stress is what forces people to, you know, stop playing and, and become, you know, chess coaches or do other things like stick to their daytime job and things like that. But I don't know, there's something about that that just draws me in. And I feel like we get addicted to that feeling. And then when we don't play for a while, we miss it. <laughs> and yeah, yes. I think that's that's how it is. Yes, right. Have you ever got <sighs> flat during a normal TV? classical game yes yes i have and yeah that was um that was also a national championship but it was an individual event and i it was a middle game even i just couldn't find a plan i forgot about the clock and i lost on time and what was funny was my opponent was actually the one who was notoriously um slow oh you can see coda <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh hi um yeah and notorious at, at playing slowly and she when i lost on time she was like oh and she was sort of smiling and i was like oh my god i just lost and i was so sad i was like half depressed it was quite awful um Anyway, I got over it and I ended up defeating the tournament leader. I ended, I, I came second in the event, but it was nice because it was my first time getting my national colors. Yeah, I was 17. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Congratulations. That's, Thank you. That's, Thank you that's really nice that you could, um, you could stand up after this loss and painful, yeah, painful mm. loss and, and still get back to the tournament uh mentally because yeah it's very painful i have lost on time too once mm -hmm. i think but it wasn't an important tournament so it wasn't it was painful but i thought there would be increment and that was on yeah i i was aware that the time was running out but i thought there is increment i mean i mean mm -hmm. like after move 40 and we were at move 40 uh two or three and and uh, i was like my opponent was like your time ran out and I'm, I'm like there is no increment and he's like no there isn't and i was winning oh. <laughs> in the game oh, i was no. just yeah but <sighs> at, anyway since it wasn't uh, an important tournament it was just kind of a practice tournament i think it wasn't even federated it was just okay, that's a good. local yeah. tournament and i was like 13 maybe or 12 nice. so yeah that's fine uh young what <laughs> young <laughs> yeah right oh man so i have one last question for you because i'm really curious about this and i always like to ask my my victims <laughs> about this um and then we can actually play because yes we also have the rapid streamer league and unfortunately i will need to leave in a bit yeah in, mm -hmm. a, in an hour maybe so one last question do you have any physical or mental rituals before an important over the board or online match Rituals. Hmm. See if I reveal them, then they're not like secret rituals anymore, you know, where I pray to the gods and <laughs> set set fire to like ten candles or something like that. I don't know. And sit in a circle. Uh no, I don't do any of those things. I don't know about rituals. I suppose in some ways I, I get superstitious. So if I'm using a pen for notation, um, and a pen isn't working out very well for my games and I'll switch pens or it was funny. We were at a, at the, the world team tournament in, in Dusseldorf and we we're talking, you know, we we're hanging out as a team and one of my teammates, they were telling me how, if they have a bad game, they will literally go back to the accommodation, change their shirt and, um, and then return and hope for a better game the next round. And if it works out, they will keep the same shirt on for that day. And then the next day, if the, the shirt is still fresh, they'll wear it again. <laughs> I'm like, okay, uh, that's also one way to go, you know, if you're superstitious. Um, switch pens, but keep playing the French. That's so rude. Yes, I play the French, okay. Let's, let's just get that out of the way. I do play the French. Um, uh, rituals, I, I guess I used to, when I was driving to, to my local tournaments and stuff like that, I would, um, put my favorite song on in the car and actually my, my favorite song at the time. And I, I played this, there was a few years where I always had the song on right before I played, uh, was magic, uh, by Coldplay, a huge Coldplay fan. And used to used to play, and that used to calm me down, and you know, put me in the mood for for some chess. I know it's a very, um, not a very like, excitable song. It's very morbid and, you know, slow, but it was good. It it helped me out. I like that. Yeah. What about you? Do you have any rituals? Oh no. <laughs> well, I. Do you get superstitious? No, no, no. 
uh, but I liked how your teammates or well, uh, your friends uh, said that they will keep the shirt if it's still fresh. I like that addition. <laughs> if <it's still> <laughs> yeah, if it's fresh, I I don't know how I would feel about sitting next to someone who who is not wearing a fresh shirt. <laughs> That's another thing I think that um, I remember from the World Youth in 2014. Uh, there was a whole team that dedicated to not changing their clothes until they had lost a game, and unfortunately, they were really good at chess, so they did not change. And every time they walked past you, it was not a pleasant experience. I must tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah hygiene first guys if you're playing otv please yes 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 yeah. indeed um talking about myself i have a crazy ritual actually uh that i started doing only recently i think i uh i read it on chess mood actually in okay. december um <laughs> <laughs> so but well, before i also just listened to my favorite um songs but i didn't or not necessarily favorite but like some sort of songs that i liked and wanted to relax before the tournament but i prefer fighting songs to hype myself up because you also said i'm a chill person well i am a chill person generally so i need some hyping uh before, okay. <laughs> before uh before the games uh, so I have one um, song that I like to put before uh, the round. Uh, Constantine actually heard it uh, <laughs> because, uh, yeah, um, we, we were on a tournament together. So one is uh, this uh, by Fallout Boy, uh, Centuries. Uh, I don't know okay. if, if you know the song. It's quite maybe if I hear it, but I no, I can't put my finger on it now. Okay, so it's it's like a hype up song, right? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. And um there is also um mm, there is there is this new song, um, Queens of the Kings or Queen of the Kings or something like that. Um it's a new Eurovision song, I think. Uh, I think the artist is Alessandra or something like that. I don't know her, but uh, I don't know if you heard the song. It's quite new. Um, no, no, it's it's not. it's quite of a yeah, it's quite a hype song again, and okay. yeah, it's quite I'll motivational. It yeah, and nice. yeah, my my weird ritual actually <laughs> is uh, this wasn't the weird one. This was the normal. Uh, <laughs> my weird one is what I read on chess mode is that I do some visualization before the tournament and, uh, I like to imagine that I, I visualize the result of the, the, um, I like that. I've never tried that. That's yeah. Cool. The, the game. And I like to imagine that, okay, my opponent is like, okay, thank you. Good game. I resign kind of things. And okay. Yes. Nice. Um, probably I should also add that I like to imagine some sort of fight where I am the strongest one, but not on the board. <laughs> it's like okay, re boxing. Really, right. really kind Remind of Remind me boxing. to not get on your bad side. <laughs> yes, and some karate maybe, and yeah, um, kick my opponent's butt. Also, this way. Damn, I girl. <laughs> It's a bit, it's a bit weird, but um, well, it types me up also, and I feel <laughs> good about. If it works, it works. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> incredible. <laughs> oh, okay. I need to imagine punching my opponent in the face. That could work out really well. Man, well, you're helping me. I think this is great. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad I could help, and uh, yeah, you like my suggestion. Just for your information, before our Rapid uh, Streamer League, I did not imagine uh, this situation with you yet. But if you give me some uh, minutes, then maybe. Yeah. No, it's okay. Um, we're like friends and stuff. So like, you don't have to do that. I think, um, I think we can just like play our game and then you don't have to imagine like punching me. 
um yeah you're nice and stuff so it's okay okay fine fine thanks so by the way i'm ready for our match uh but okay. thank you very much for for uh again uh again thank you very much for accepting my invite to this interview it was fun thanks for having me yeah and... it was a lot of fun thank you so much <laughs> And well, uh, maybe we can do an other collaboration similar to this another time. It's it's nice yes. chatting with you. So <laughs> yeah, it's really fun. Thank you so much. And hopefully, I can also make some sort of fun questions for you, just as like payback, but also like returning uh, this and just just for fun, I guess. And we can play at the same time our emo chess. Uh, which I've been looking forward to playing. Um, for those of you who don't know, we actually took our own emotes and Fuji um, sort of found out how to do this and it's been incredible, I love it, and manipulate the pieces to changing them into our emotes. So our pawns would obviously, there'll be one emote and then our other emote. But then you sort of have to remember what piece is which uh, emote and it, it's so much fun, I love it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we can do that. Okay, good luck for the match. I know you 